I'm really proud to share that just this past August, we granted um, about $4.2 million from an innovation fund from the Walmart Foundation that is meant to work with universities to help progress in areas around new technologies with the respect to manufacturing textiles. I think having the right brand, expressing the right brand, the level of service inside a store, the experience inside the store. I think there's a great future in brick and mortar and it has to be married with great architecture on the side of online sales. But when the two come together, there's really an amazing magic that happens in terms of driving sales and driving customer loyalty. We really have started about two years ago developing a, a digital strategy and that strategy has really been about sort of building the brand image in a, in a way that feels thoughtful and brings people into the brand, but also doing it in a, a way that still feels exclusive. We started an initiative recently we call O2O, -O, online to offline, offline to online. We are taking payment uh, live at the desk through Near Field Technology. We're trying to connect the digital storefront with the physical storefront. You walk in with your smartphone, you take a picture of the tag, the item is shipped to your house tomorrow, the store gets credit for the sale and everybody's happy. At Spring, we really believe in the power of mobile, we believe in being with the customer everywhere. We'll also be thinking about how to augment those other channels. I'm seeing a lot of fashion being done on the Day of the Dead. I see a lot of fashion being inspired by some of the greatest icons of uh, Latin America. Justin is staying focused on our customer. It's really thinking about our brand and it's really thinking about how they're interacting with our brand in all of the channels. But really thinking around what moves the needle in terms of customer experience in the digital channels and in your retail experience. The number one way that we look to prioritize is by linking everything that we consider back to our brand voice, back to our storytelling, and making sure that it enhances that storytelling, that it delivers a superior customer service, and that it gives her an experience that she can't get in our way from anywhere else. When ELO enables aggregation of products from anywhere, users post products and that's how we actually learn about new stores. We enable stores to actually upload their product feeds and sync up the product data that way. I think fashion companies can benefit from data tremendously, especially these days we have so much data available from your point of sales, from your credit card history, uh, from Twitter, Google, Facebook. We're significantly ramping up our investment in the digital space and in building a real e-commerce uh, presence. Giving the consumer that kind of integrated experience between four-wall retail and the digital world. One of the assets that the fashion industry has right now is Instagram and Facebook. That when women go out, they feel great, they take photographs of themselves in their new outfit, and they share it with their thousand friends on Instagram. That's the most powerful marketing that there is. Those who consider themselves luxury really need to consider really rethinking their distribution model, you know, between bricks and mortar, wholesale and direct to consumer because that's how the customer sees it. There's going to be an expectation with consumers that the things that they buy are smart. I'm focused largely on wearables and wearable technology and I think actually this year is going to be a, a big year where we see you know, what things are working and, and which things don't resonate with consumers. It's the next industrial revolution. I mean, we're, we're talking about a technology that will change the way everything's made. It's a very disruptive technology that forces you to rethink everything. Thank you.